And I'm here to introduce our minister. Um, first, I want to say that it's an honor and a privilege to be able to introduce this person. Because um, our first sighting of her, I won't say encounter, because it was not really an encounter. It was a sighting. It was about two years ago at Alabaster service. And she was worshipping God unashamedly. If you think Sabimba worships God unashamedly, it was like on a pro max level. Shoes were off, hats was off, and she was appreciating God. And I think it stuck with Metty and I because we were like, a pastor's wife dancing like this. But we thank God because we were also learning to worship God that way without any shame or prejudice of thinking of what people would think about us. But our speaker in the house is a consultant. She's a friend of the family. She's a consultant family physician, a public health specialist with over 16 years of experience. She's a conversationalist who is passionate about excellence and self-development, being solution-driven, innovative. She's overly an enthusiastic and passionate and optimistic person. She's a woman, when you see her, she radiates the love, the glory, and the admiration of her family. She has been blessed with three beautiful children, and she's one who is also very, very excited to be doing ministry with her husband. Please join me to welcome the person of Pastor Dr. Jadisola Ido. Thank you very much, Ma. We are very excited to have you here today. Yes, yeah, somebody shout hallelujah. I want you to greet your neighbor and say, welcome to church. Welcome to the innumerable company of angels. Welcome to the church of the firstborn. So glad to be in your midst today. And um, like was said, a family. And um, Pastor Dupi and I have been a long, long way back. We're both in Senior High Crusaders in the National Headquarters Church way many years ago. And gradually, we have remained in Foursquare. And you know, this month, we're talking about loyalty. So for all of us here, especially as youths, I have a message. And if we have remained over 37 years, you can stay too. Tell your neighbor, you have to continue this gospel. We have stayed all the way. We, I had an opportunity when I got married. My husband was going to House on the Rock. But I knew the four square gospel is a complete gospel. Tell your neighbor it's a balanced gospel. <laughs> Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. So I bring you greetings from my darling husband, Pastor Rotimi Dowu, and the Blast Church. I come from the Blast U Church. We are one of the National Headquarters Church where we pastor. And Blast, of course, you know, means believers living and succeeding together. And really, that is the gospel. That is what we stand for. And honestly, the message I have for all of us as youths and young people is you just must continue and propagate this gospel, especially amongst the youths, which is why the, the vision of our general overseer, who is actually in church right now ministering, is for the next gen, the next gen agenda. We have a decade of sorrowing. In which outreach and the next gen. The next gen means that the next generation, the youth churches have been planted all over. We're having a lot of youth churches springing up. And tell your neighbor, you are next in line to plant another church. <laughs> so it's not about competition. We need, why are you not saying that? You're afraid. Pastor Dupa is still here and he's still going to plant many more in Jesus' name. You are next in line. We have to spread this gospel. We have to spread it because it sees a balanced gospel. And honestly, the agenda of our general overseer, Reverend Sam Abuyeji, is right in time. It's so important. Our youths are going everywhere. And we have the real thing. Tell your neighbor you have the real thing. All right, shall we pray? Our Father and our God, we want to thank you for today. Holy Spirit, we invite you once again. Sweet Spirit of God, have your way in our midst. Teach us again. Father, remind us again. Heal us, O oh God. Save us, O oh God. Redeem us, O oh God. We ask that you take charge of my members. Help me to minister, O oh God, just what your people need to hear, both on site and online, that this one will bring healing, this one will bring deliverance, this one will bring mercy and salvation to as many as have not known you in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, for hearing us. Let there be a release of your spirit, O God, in our midst. Do what only you can do, sweet spirit of God, and let your name alone be glorified. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 
Right, so glad to be in your midst again. I am Dr. Jade Solaidou, and I'm also a pastor by the grace of God. Now, today we're talking about the topic is enrichment for divine multiplication. This is our loyalty month, and it's so important for all of us to remain loyal. I think so important. I don't even want to go to the story of my family when my husband actually decided to leave. And by the grace of God, I was able to persuade him to remain because of so many things. So your loyalty is so important to the church. And which is why this message is not just for all of us here. For all of us, even in the diaspora, for all of us that are planning to steal Jackpot, you shouldn't go to Canada or to UK and just join any other church with all that you have been loaded in. I mean, all of us can be teachers and pastors everywhere. The 22 tenets of faith is so solid. So when you get to US, when you get to Canada, you know that God is sending you as an ambassador to plant another four square church. Somebody shout hallelujah. Do I have a witness there? So if you are here, you're already in the diaspora, and you have joined another, let me not mention name. <laughs> Please, God is talking to you. This four square gospel must expand. I mean, it started in the U.S., in the Angelus Temple. Pastor Dupe has been there. I mean, I, I need to visit that place. I've been in LA, but I've not been there. I'm going to plan to get there when I get to America next. Angelus Temple, Amy Temple, Mark, Mark Percy was a woman like all my sisters and me. And she started this gospel, and it's still thriving. And it will not die in our hands in Jesus' name. So please, when you go abroad, know that you are going to plant another church for the Lord. Praise the Lord. So we're talking about enrichment for divine multiplication, and this time around, the key of sacrifice. Our text is taken from Luke 5, 5, and Genesis 13, 8 to 9. Now, um, by way of introduction, I will start with introduction, then my message is in three categories. We have categories of sacrifice, to look at the different categories of sacrifice, we want to look at the conditions for acceptable sacrifice and the characteristics of acceptable sacrifice, and then we conclude. But by way of definition, what do we mean by enrichment? Youth, enrichment. If you don't get money, hide your face. How many people have heard that song? That is what they are looking for. Why are they doing yahoo yahoo? Why are they doing uh, all sorts, even in uh, Abuja? Enrichment means the process of making somebody wealthy or wealthier. That's by way of definition. It also means an action of improving or enhancing the quality or value of something. Definition again, what does sacrifice mean? Sacrifice means to... Sacrifice means a ritual, a slaughter, or an offering, or an oblation to a deity or to a higher being. In, um, the, in the old times, it's an act of slaughtering an animal or surrendering a possession or money or talent or gifts as an offering to a deity, to a god. Now, we're done with the definitions. So when we say enrichment for div divine multiplication, by way of introduction, this is our year of divine multiplication. That's the mandate God gave our general overseer. And in this divine multiplication, God is expecting us to expand all around, financially, maritally, for the young ones that have not yet married, spiritually, emotionally, in every sphere, in our careers, and in every sphere of life. And that mandate came from Genesis 1.28, when God told Adam, and God blessed them and said, be fruitful and multiply, subdue the earth and um, have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and over every living thing. Genesis 1.28. Now this mandate, God wants to fulfill in our lives, but it's going to come also by sacrifice. Tell your neighbor, you must sacrifice. And God is not asking for bulls, goats, and ram this time around. Our sacrifices will get to know. In terms of our talents, our treasures, our time, God is going to demand of it. And that is what will bring the multiplication we're trusting God for this year in Jesus' name. So, Let's now go to the categories of sacrifice. We have two main categories of sacrifice. There's an acceptable sacrifice and there's a rejected sacrifice. Our sacrifices will not be rejected in Jesus' name. What are the 
okay, so in let me just read the text that we should have read. I was hoping we'll have a projection somewhere. Luke 5.5 5 says, But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the nets. This was Simon Peter. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Simon Peter had, was an experienced fisherman. He thought he would, he knows the best time to fish in the night when the fishes are maybe sleeping. And then he did all his calculation. And many of us are still in that category, looking at what the experts are saying. The money markets, the, the um, fixed deposits, and all those investment shares. But there's a God that knows tomorrow, that knows one policy that will change everything overnight, like we're seeing in Nigeria. And you had better put your faith in him, and not on what the experts are saying, which is what happened to Peter here. He said, we have told all night, fishes, we catch them more in the night. Nevertheless, at your word, which is why you must get that word from God. What is that word God is giving you concerning your life, concerning your career, concerning your finances? What is that word? And run with it. Not at what the experts are saying. Not at what the market is saying or what Nigeria is even saying. But the God that rules the heavens and the earth, that controls nations, is what we will hang on to. And please get that word from him before you take any step in Jesus' name. So Peter held on to the word of God and he caught so much that he knew that this was a miracle. The same we see in Genesis 13, 8 to 9. And Abraham said to Lot, let there be no strife between you and me and my headsmen and your headsmen, for we are brethren. And the land is before you, separate from me. You take to the left and I will go to the right. And if you go to the right, I will go to the left. Deuteronomy 8, 18 says, And you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he that gives you power to make wealth. I'm sure you know it's only God that can give us wealth. The God way. The legal way. The good way. One idea. And you know, each time I remember your church, I remember your pastor and in also, who is, I mean, making waves. It's only God that can make that happen. That somebody studied legal studies and something else and then gets to Silicon Valley and learns something and then he has blown. I mean, that's what you people talk about youths. He, he don't blow, as in, he's not on the same level. By divine mandate. So the same, it is God that gives power to get wealth. It's not by Yahoo Yahoo. It's not by following them to do fraud or all sorts of malpractice or following the politicians to squander the money, all the constituency allowances that should be used to develop the nation, all the portals all over Lagos, it is God that gives power to get well. And that means that idea. The Bible talks of knowledge of witty inventions, that innovative idea. They are still looking for them in Silicon Valley, all over, and even in Nigeria. That idea, that thing that can bring a solution, God wants to give to you, but he needs you to cooperate. He wants to see your heart. Before God can deposit that gift, that talent in you, he wants to be sure your heart is really right. Are you really going to see it as your own or as his own? One, th one thing I've learned, even in my little work with God, is that God really does not invest in stingy people. Hello? God wants to see a man that he can invest in, that will spread it abroad, that will give, send people to school, build orphanages, Build more churches. Invest in the kingdom of God. All the people I've seen that are rich, legitimately, rich as Christians, they've always been people that, that are so generous. Generous in every way. Giving everything. And I even remember in his story at the ICML, when he told us how God lifted him up when he was starting, that he had this 40,000 that was like almost the end. And God said, give it. So when God is telling you, give Give something. And it looks like, ah, God, I don't have transport money. You better yield. You better yield to it. Because that's, God is testing your heart the same way he tested Abraham. He says, give your only son, your only son. That was Genesis 22. Go and sacrifice him. Not Ishmael, your only son. That one that is the son of promise. And the Bible says in Hebrews eleven nineteen, and Abraham was fully persuaded that God was able to raise him up. God wants us to get to that level, to know that this money is not yours. The Bible says, what have you received that is your own? That you have not re what, what do you have that you have not received from above? What do you think that, that little money you have is not even in dollars? This is our Naira that they have turned to something. And you are bragging. What do you have that you have not received from God? The Bible says, no man can receive anything except to be given from above. 
So God wants you to have a heart of generosity, a heart of surrender to know that God is you that made me who I am today. And whatever you require of me, like Abraham, even my only begotten son, it will be yours. Because I know that if you take him, you, you still raise him up you, or you give me another one. We must get to that level of full persuasion like Abraham got to, that God was able to raise him up. And Abraham was fully persuaded. And God is waiting for many more millionaires to raise in our midst, in your church. God is waiting for many more to raise. Just to give you an idea. So just to give you an idea, but it needs a heart of surrender. It needs a heart that will sacrifice, that will know that nothing is from me. Everything belongs to God. And I will share my own testimony where many times I've had to empty my account, not because I wanted to. And I know my husband would just ask, so what are you doing with your salary? What is it? Orphans, widows, just pray that. But the Bible talks about those that give unto the poor, lending unto the Lord. And when you do that, I mean, the promotion I experienced recently, I got another job just um, last year. I started in January. It was just God. It was just God because when God moves you from hey, one digit to like multiple digits overnight, it can only be God. And God is waiting for many more people to raise like that. Because he needs to build more churches. He needs to build more youth churches. Like your light arena. He wants to expand you everywhere. To the right and to the left. And he needs people he can trust with kingdom wealth. He's waiting for you again. So please yield. When God is saying give that money. So into that kingdom. So into that house building project. I remember also when I was in the US. Went to for vacation last year. And another church was building. And the Lord laid upon my heart to give, and I was actually very angry. And why was I angry? Not because I didn't want to give. But this immediate problem started then. I could not get a single dollar when I was traveling. Now, it was in America. I started looking for dollar, trying to buy, and then told my husband. And God is saying, this one that I finished asking everybody to send to me, I'm trying to, yeah, she now give it. I said, Father, be merciful now. Which kind? I will give. You know, I, will, I have a heart I can give. But this one that is uh, collecting from everyone, looking for exchange, it didn't even reach $1,000. You say I must give. But after struggling, I knew I had to give. And shortly after was when I went for that interview and the Lord gave me a better job. The, you are next in line for a miracle in Jesus' name. So basically, God will demand of you what looks impossible. But that's because he wants to give you something better. He wants to take you to a higher level. And your own is obedience. We're talking about obedience. You must obey. You must obey. Even when you struggle. Like that time I was actually struggling. Like God, you know I left, I go to America only with one dollar. I always keep one dollar for my trolling. So how would you tell me to give one thousand dollars? Well, when I'm still looking for this thing, I did not like it. But I knew God was speaking. They called. People come out and give to these our building projects. I said, God, you know we're even looking for, uh, we're building our own youth church. Blast. We're looking for money to build. You are not saying I should give. But I gave. Obedience. Even when it's so difficult, like Abraham. Total obedience. The Bible says, for disobedience is as a sin of witchcraft. And partial obedience is disobedience. If God gives, says, give $1,000 and you give $500, you have actually just donated. You did not obey. That's, that's disobedience. Obedience to the letter. God told Abraham, Genesis 22, sacrifice now your son, your only son. And the Bible says Abraham departed and he carried his son early in the morning and they went to Mount Moriah. And as he was about to do it, God says, now I've seen. God is waiting for your obedience. And I pray on that day of trial, on that day when he's nudging you, you will not say, leave me alone. Devil, get away. <laughs> you will give that seed, that money, that time, that talent, and the Lord will bless you in return in Jesus' name. So what are the categories of sacrifice? We know the story of Abraham and, I mean, Abel and Cain. Now, an acceptable sacrifice is found um, in the story of Cain and Abel. Abel gave an acceptable sacrifice. Cain gave a, an unworthy sacrifice. In Romans 12, 1 and 2, the Bible talks about a holy and living sacrifice. The Bible says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a, a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. So the best sacrifice is a living sacrifice. And I want you to tell yourself, I am a living sacrifice. So that's why salvation of our souls, ourselves, we are the first sacrifice we must give to God and yield our lives to God, give our lives to God. Now we're giving our lives to God. We must be a living sacrifice. There's a difference between a living and a dead sacrifice. 
A living sacrifice is that one that is still living, characteristics of living things. Biology students, Mr. Niger, is still living, still living. And every day is yielding in obedience. Every day is following the master. In fact, somebody said, if Abraham was this our kind of old generation Christian, because God has said in the past, go and kill your son, he would have killed that son because he heard what God said in the past, but he's not hearing what God is saying today. Meanwhile, God has changed him and said, do not kill him, hold out. Bible says, Abraham was about to cut and an angel appeared and God said, if it was the old school, I'd say, ah, God has said, oh, this is what God said, oh, into 1920. But what's God saying in 2023? That is a living sacrifice. That's a man that is in connection with heaven. And the question is, what is God saying now to you? What is now saying, what is God saying now about your career, about your marriage, about your finances? It is not what God said in the past, but what is he saying now? God told Abraham, kill that man, kill your son. But now he changed his mind and said, no, hold on. I've provided a, a lamb for sacrifice. God is still speaking, and which is why we must be living sacrifices, connected to heaven, hearing him 24-7. And of course, God is speaking. But we are the ones that must sharpen our antennas to hear all the time. Now, Bible says also in Romans 15, verse 30, about our lives being worthy of honor to God. The Bible says, Now I beg you, brethren, through the Lord Jesus Christ and through the love of God, love of the spirit that you strive together with me in prayers and pray to God for me. We must seek cooperation and support people in the ministry. And this was um, seen in the life of Paul and the ministers that supported him. But going now to the story of Cain and Abel, the, the acceptable sacrifice was that of Cain, and we see that in Genesis. The Bible says, um, Abel offered unto God the best of the fats and the rams and the clam. I mean, he gave the best. He gave the best. The Bible also talks about Solomon. That's in 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 4. That Solomon offered unto the Lord a thousand burnt offerings. And the question is, what exactly are you offering unto God? Some of us, when we come to church, it is that dirty note. It is that... Which one is the smallest denomination? 50 naira, 100 naira. But an acceptable sacrifice is the best of the best. And honestly, anybody trusting God for kingdom, wealth, and for prosperity, I mean, I was at the ICML and I remember Mommy um, Bola Adam saying that nobody should actually give anything less than 1,000. And I believe in that. Now, if you don't have ups with that, whatever your level is, but honestly, if you believe God to give you the best, then you must give God the best. The best of the currencies. The best of the currencies, but that's just another thing on another level. What are we trying to say? You give the God the best, and how do you plan it? It's not the leftover like Cain gave, just the rough, rough, and all the nonsense that was left over. Abel gave the best, looked at all the animals and the best, and he chose the fattest, the, 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 the most robust, the best. The same even in our own times. Are you a student or are you earning salary? As you collect your money, you pay your tithes, which I'm sure nobody's debating here. Praise the Lord. 10% belongs to God. And if you want to move up, like some people, I mean, there are some giving more than 10%. But So after giving your tithes, then you plan your offering, regardless of what level you are, whatever God has blessed you with. As you are coming for Bible study, as you are coming for Sunday, of you've delegated and planned it somewhere. I mean, transfer is what we do now. Or if you are still using cash, you keep it there. And you are just planning. Every offering, okay, 1,000 or 2,000 or 5,000 or 10,000 as the Lord has blessed you. And maybe some of us are even spending dollars. You plan it. It's not the one left over after you have come. What is remaining now? No. You plan it. And that's when God knows this one is serious. I can invest in this guy. I can invest in this lady because she's ready for this world. And she will not amass it for herself. She will not spend it on frivolities. She will spend it for the kingdom. That's what God is waiting for. This is what Abel did and made his sacrifice acceptable. He gave God the best. Cain gave God an unworthy offering. And that's where we're going next. The second category of sacrifice is the rejected sacrifice. And that's the one we see in Genesis 4, 3 to 5. The Bible says, and in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of the fruit of the ground to the Lord. Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flocks and of their fat. And the Lord respected Abel and his offering. 
But he did not respect Cain and his offering. And Cain was very angry. Simple. He gave God something that was unworthy, something that he could not present to the king, something that was not the best. What is the message here? Give God your best. Tell your neighbor, give God your best. That's what is worthy. Praise the Lord. So to get our sacrifice is to be acceptable. It must be a worthy sacrifice. It must be acceptable to God. And it must be the best. The best you can afford. The best that God has blessed you with. And unless if you begin to have that change of heart. To see that nothing. I mean, maybe because I'm a doctor. This life. Huh, people younger than me are dying. People older than me are dying. Children are dying. So when you know that this life is just, when the Bible talks in Ecclesiastic, vanity upon vanity. All is vanity. So this, I will go get this, I will get that. The one God has given you, enjoy it, but spread it abroad. Be like dockers. Give to the widows. Give to the poor. Give to the needy. Give to building projects. Give in any way. The Bible says, cast your bread upon the waters. Give a portion to seven and to the eight because you do not know which one will yield. And not for yourself. Of course, you do your part, take care of your family, take care of yourself, but never see it as your own. That change of mentality is so important. It's so important, especially for us in Nigeria. When people we amass so much, these days we hear of billions. Billions, billions. And what are they using it for? You can't even see that somebody will steal. The Lord will deliver us in Jesus' name. So rejected sacrifice was the sacrifice of Cain because he was not a worthy sacrifice. It was the worst he didn't give God his best. So the bottom line is that not every sacrifice is acceptable to God. Those dirty old notes are not okay. If you cannot, even a conductor will reject it. Then, so don't bring it to the house of God. Hello? Let's give God something worthy. The best, the cleanest. And the Lord will bless us as we do so. Now, the object of our sacrifice also matters. And the state of the heart is also important. The Bible says... God sees our heart. You know, Jesus told us that story when people were giving and he was watching and observing. And then he saw a widow that gave just a little mice, two mice or so. And then he, he said she gave more than the others. And I want you to know Jesus is still watching today. So even when you squeeze it, he's still watching. And he knows what he has blessed you with. And he knows, is this commensurate to what I've blessed you with? Are you still giving that hundred naira? Can we improve it? In fact, what I learned in my work with God is that when I trust God for a new level, I start giving even before that promotion comes. So I'm trusting God for a higher level and I begin to give more. And every year I trust God for promotion. So if I was given 5,000 this year, next year I'm trusting God, I want to be given 10,000. I may not get to that level now, but I'm trusting you. And I start in faith by giving that 10,000 and then the promotion comes, the blessing comes. And then many more things come. So begin to have that heart of faith. Like Abraham. Be fully persuaded that God is able to lift you up. God will answer that prayer. God will take you to that next level. And you will testify in Jesus' name. The second part of our teaching is the conditions for acceptable sacrifice. Now God looks at our heart. In fact, a popular saying says, the heart of the matter is the matter of the heart. God wants us to give cheerfully. God wants us to give willingly. And of course, with the heart of sacrifice. So God is watching that heart. Are you giving just to impress so that you can tell the whole world you have so much money? Or are you giving because you love God? Some people are even transactional. I've heard of people that say, ah, God, I've been paying tight since. Hey, if you don't do this, I will stop. Who are you doing business with? That's like Kalu Kalu. Yes, God has promised you will put the devourer for your sake. But it's not about a transactional God. It's about your love for God. I mean, see how much he has done. He has saved you. He's delivering you every day. He's done so much. So the least you can do is just to appreciate him in love. Not do me, I do you. 50-50. I give this. You give. Some people are like that. And we even hear some gospels like that. That's not how our God works. He is, he, I mean, he does beyond our expectations. So it's not about giving you the 10% back or giving you the 50%. He wants to even blow your mind. But he needs that heart of love. He wants that heart of obedience. It wants the heart of sacrifice. Now, conditions for acceptable sacrifices are number one, God looks into our hearts. That's seen in Exodus 25 2. God is watching our hearts and He sees what is the state of your heart. And if your heart is not right and pure before God, if the motive to make yourself look good or to show the whole world that you have arrived, then you have the reward. But if the motive is to honor God, 
to bless lives, to help the sick and needy, then he's going to do more for you. So God is looking at the heart. Those are the conditions for acceptable sacrifice. God also demands purity in our sacrifices. That is seen in Psalm 51, 16 to 7. God demands purity. Number three is that the object of sacrifice must be consecrated. God does not want any unholy, unhealthy sacrifice. It must be consecrated. It must be holy. And that's also in Romans 12 too. And lastly, God demands consecration and dedication. Those are the conditions for acceptable sacrifice. The other thing is that God also expects our sacrifice to be the best and to be costly. That's seen in 2 Samuel 24-24 and Mark 12, 42-44. Can we project that Mark 12, 42-44? And also 1 Kings 3, 4-5. 1 Kings chapter 3, 4-5. The Bible says, and Solomon offered, okay, Mark 12. Then one poor widow came and threw in two mice. Which made this, and then Jesus said and told them, I say to you, this poor widow has put in more than all those who have given the treasury. So it's about proportion. She doesn't have so much, but she gave all her life savings, the Bible says, from those commentaries. Everything. And the question is, can you really give everything to God? Can God tell you to empty your bank account and go and minister to the widows around you or to the orphans or to the people looking for admission? I remember a girl that you know, was going to be a house help. She got admission to university and we went, my husband went to, she got admission, she's also a student, so no school fees. And then she, the only offer, the mother is a widow, is to become a house help. And without even consulting, my husband said, look, I will take over her fees and then paid her school fees through school. And today she's a graduate to the glory of God. God is waiting for more of those. There are many children, I mean, best brains, that are becoming house help, becoming all sorts, because there's nobody to sponsor them. God is depending on you. And it's not until you become a millionaire. Right now, in any way, you can support those children, support those students. Passing YEC with all the, you know, high scores. And um, jam too. But they can't have sponsorship. Please begin to think of how you can become somebody God can depend on. So God says this sacrifice must be something that will cost us. King David said he will not offer unto the Lord anything that will cost him nothing. That's in 2 Samuel 24, 22 to 25. David gave the best also, I mean, and he taught his son, Solomon, who also said, he gave unto the Lord a thousand burnt offerings, and the Lord visited him that night. We know the story of Solomon. He prayed to God, asked for wisdom. The Lord told him to ask for anything, and he asked for wisdom. And God now said, beyond this, I will bless you with wisdom, I will bless you with wealth, and the Lord did all that for him. First Kings 3, 4 to 5. But before then, he had offered unto the Lord a thousand burnt offerings. He gave God all. I mean, and I'm sure he learned it from his father. That's also the thing about generational blessings and generational lessons, which is part of the message I have for us as a youth church. You can't keep this message to yourself. Everywhere you go, you must pass it on to our little children. It's a generational thing. Our fathers passed it on to us. And like I told you, Pastor Dukwe and I, we've been in Foursquare for more than 37 years. From senior high, from junior high, senior high, youth, and then we're still here serving the Lord. And God is de de depending on you too to carry on this gospel, to propagate, to get more people to know about Jesus. And the question is, can the Lord depend on you? And my prayer is that the Lord will depend on us all in Jesus' name. So our sacrifice must be the choicest. That's seen in Leviticus 22, 24. The best. Exodus 32, 18. Of quality and durable. The best quality. Hosea 9, 4. The God is demanding the best. He's not hungry now. He's not asking for, I mean, he's just, he's just wanting to bless you and he needs to be sure your heart is right. In fact, I always tell young people too that many times, a lot of young people just want to get rich quick, or some people. But the tr truth of the matter is that before God can entrust you with that wealth, you need to go through a process. We have heard of some people that became millionaires and stopped coming to church. Because like, ah, finally, don't blow. Hey, all the clubs in town, let us go. As in, they were not ready. They were not even broken. They didn't know God. But when you go through that process, God is molding you, making you. When that money comes, you see it as a servant. It will not dominate you. You'll not be like those that have not seen money before that will now go gaga. 
that money, you will control it and begin to spread it. All the missionaries in the corridor, everywhere, just giving it. But when you're not ready and God is not blessing you yet, it's because it's, too, it's taking you through that process. I need to get my daughter more prepared. I need to make her more humble. I need to make her more holy. I need to help her so that when that world comes, she will not blow it anyhow. So that process, we must all be patient to go through it. In fact, the Bible talks of those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. There's a place for patience. And honestly, that patient waiting period is so important for all of us. Because if God makes many of us rich, some of us will not come to church again. Some of us will, like the men, marry more wives. So, ah, yes, so David married many women. You hear some Christians arguing. Who says I cannot marry? Oh, yeah, all the fine girls in town. <laughs> you just do all sorts of naughty things. But when you go through that process and you now know, ah, it's one man, one wife. Oh, that is the mandate of heaven from Genesis. That is documented does not mean that is recommended. That David married so many. It was an example for us to learn from. Yes, the Bible is, is there in the Bible, but that's not the standard of God. That's not the concept of marriage that God gave us in Genesis. Yes, it's documented in the Bible, but it is not recommended. Tell your name, but it is not recommended. Polygamy, homosexuality, all those abnormal things are not recommended. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. So, our sacrifices must be costly. They must be of good quality. They must be holy and consecrated to God. Lastly, we'll talk about what are the types of sacrifice we can give. Characteristics of acceptable sacrifice. Thanksgiving. Leviticus 7. 12 to 13. The Bible talks about the fruit of our lips. It's so important. Sometimes people get so big and so holy, even to worship and praise God. But if you remember the story of David, the Bible says, and David danced before the Lord, and danced and danced, and then Micah rebuked, and Micah, the daughter of Saul, was uh, despised him. I said, how can a king, a whole king, like uh, the president now, be dancing in front of commons? Ah, uh -uh, don't you have some etiquette? You know, packaging. And you see some very big and rich people, they don't dance. They just, you know, very, very packaged, well packaged. Just. But when you come to church and to the house of God, who are you packaging for? This God, Bible says, with the fruit of your lips, you must bless God. The psalm is full of praises. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Forget not all his benefits. You must worship God with the fruit of your lips. You must appreciate him. I mean, your brother will say, oh, my own Jerry. He's not asking for a band. Or, uh, he needs the fruit of your lips to say, Father, I thank you for the salvation of my soul, for saving me, for blessing me, for my children, for my husband. God wants you to say it. Yes, it's in your heart, but can you say it? Can you appreciate God? Can you worship him? Even the manner of prayer Jesus taught his disciples started with worship. When they say, teach us to pray, Lord. He says, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. There's a place for worship, and God is waiting for that worship from us in Jesus' name. So, sacrifices of thanksgiving, very important. Let us not feel too big or too, too, comp too sophisticated to worship God. Let's dance. The Bible talks about in Psalm 150, let's praise him with a dance. And, I mean, your people are very good worshipers. I remember the alabaster. Let's praise him with a dance. Let's scatter the ground and worship him. We don't do club. We don't go to club. We come to the house of God and praise our God. Because he has saved us. He has helped us. And we are allowed to dance. Somebody shout hallelujah. So, sacrifices of thanksgiving. The second one is the sacrifice of our time. Ecclesiastic 13, 1. Ecclesiastic 9, 11. Time, we all have 24, 7. But how do you spend your time? Maybe you are a student now. And you are not um, yet in school. You can volunteer. Or maybe you are looking for a job. You can even volunteer in a place. The current job I have came by volunteering. When First Square wanted to start a minister's welfare scheme, and they asked for a doctor. I was in Bible school then, and our chairman now said, ah, doctor, come and help us. I didn't have to oblige. I'm not the only doctor, but I obliged. And it was from there, I, called, I got a call from the CEO of the... HMO I now work with, I said, we're looking for a consultant to, in fact, we want it to be a male, because it's a big position, chief operating officer. I need uh, CVs. Can you help me send all the guys, any consultant, physician, you know? And the Lord reminded me, are you not looking for work? I said, oh, I'm qualified, to. I'm a consultant too. He said, no, I want guys. It's a big job, uh, chief operating officer, you know? I said, I'm qualified though. I said, I'm, uh, what a man can do. 
You man can do. Ah. It's okay. Send your CV to but send men to. Now soon as so we went for interview and today I'm the chief operating officer by the grace of God of Axam and Health. But it came. It came because I volunteered. Not to be paid, just to serve God in that capacity. And then we had meetings. And First Square today has a welfare, I mean, package for ministers. But I was the doctor that started that package, the whole insurance program together. And today, that opportunity came because somebody had my number. And now, so when you need to volunteer, young ones, please teach those people doing jam. You know math, you know physics, volunteer your time. Because you never know how God will connect you and bring things in place that will take you to the next level. So volunteer your time. Time is so important. How do you spend your time? We must redeem the time. Like the Bible says, because the days are evil. Ephesians 5.16, Colossians 4.5. God wants us to redeem the time. We must not waste the time. We must not spend the time, especially these days of um, all sorts of things in Nigeria. Please don't join them to be talking about why um, subsidies should go or should not go? And spending hours arguing when they are enjoying their life in Abuja. What should you do? I don't know what Nigeria you want. But I'm part of a praying team that have been believing God for a new Nigeria. And we're still praying for that new Nigeria. We have not changed our mind. And we're decreeing that a new Nigeria comes in the name of Jesus. That new Nigeria where there will be, there will be free of corruption. There will be free of poverty. There will be free of all sorts of corruption and evil. And that's what I'm still believing God. So instead of spending that energy, arguing and saying why it should go, why they are making us suffer, can I convert that to prayer? Can I turn to God and say, Father, this is not the Nigeria I want to. The Nigeria I was born into 50 years ago was not like this. We could walk around. There were no kidnappers. There were no sorts of evil. The corruption was not like this. We want a new Nigeria. That Pa Elton prophesied. So please, let's convert our energy into positive use. Don't join them to argue. Whatever they've done, they've done their own. But I say God in heaven that still rules in the affairs of men. And we're still trusting him for that new Nigeria. And we'll see that new Nigeria in our time in Jesus' name. So don't join them to waste time. I see a lot of people arguing on Twitter, cussing at... Peace. Let's kneel down and pray. Let's call on God. And I still believe God. Like one man prophesied, my father is coming. And he's still going to show up in Jesus' name. So our time must be used usefully for the praise and uh, honor of God. And our treasures, this is where the money comes in, and other talents. So our treasures include our talents, our gifts. God bless our instrumentalists. Please continue to serve God in every capacity. I've heard of God, uh, people that got jobs also from playing things in church, playing instruments, you know, in any capacity as an usher, in any capacity. You're just serving God, you're in your own capacity. But God knows you need a lifting. God knows you need a next level. And because of your faithfulness, it takes you there. So whatever you are doing, and maybe you're not even doing something in church, please, can you find something to do? Children ministry, which other ministry do you have? Ushering, whatever ministry, can you find somewhere to serve God in and be faithful in that? That is your talent. You can sing, you can dance, you can usher people. God wants us to serve him with our talents and resources. God also expects us to honor him with everything he has given us. Like Cornelius. Cornelius, the Bible says, was a good man. And because of his goodness, the Lord sent Peter to tell him about the story of salvation. The other thing is, the parable of the talents is instructive, and we all need to look at that in Luke 19, 13 to 15. I don't know how many times it was my time, but I will begin to wrap up now. Zacchaeus also, though he was a tax collector, the Lord visited him, and he actually did what they call restitution. That's in Luke 19, 8 to 10. Many stories of people that gave, like Tabitha, the Good Samaritan um, story, Dockers, uh, abound in the Bible. And the truth of the matter is that in the story of faith and in the story of time, at the end of time, when our lives are passed, what would they say about you? Will you be known as that good man or that good woman that gave, that helped, that was there, that was known in church for our generosity, that was known in church for our sacrifice, that was not in church for giving our time. Even as a student, helping, you know, you can just do anything for people, wash people's cars. I remember a security man, we had a visitor that came and then he just saw the car that was dirty. Nobody told him, he washed it. And the woman was so impressed, 
gave him 2,000. Ah, I didn't tell you to wash, but because you did it out of your own volition. Thank you. So when you see things that are out of place, even in church, can you do something about it? That's what God is expecting for us. That's the sacrifice of your heart to be right. Your heart must be treasure. That's what God is asking us, and it's not too much. But it needs your heart to be right. Your heart must be right that this thing God has given you does not belong to you. It's actually to God. God gave it and he can demand it at any time. And when he now demands it, you must never hold it. You must never feel it's not there. And I've seen that many times when God demands, like he told Abraham in that Genesis 22. Many times it looks impossible. How can God that gave me this son, this only son, who I don't get more than one. You don't say I should sacrifice him. But he heard clearly and he obeyed. Total obedience. That's what we're talking about. Not partial obedience. Partial obedience is disobedience. The Bible says for disobedience, Numbers 22, it's like the sin of witchcraft. Disobedience, partial obedience is disobedience. So full obedience is what God is demanding. Please obey. It may look difficult. It may look impossible. God, I don't even have this $1,000. They did not give us dollars in Nigeria. Even when you have it in your account, they refused before they started even the Naira one. God, and you say I should come and give $1,000. Where will I get it from? And he says, I will bless you with it. Can you trust me and go out and be among those that are pledging? So when they make pledge, don't commonize it. Especially when God is touching your heart. Don't make it like they've come again. Some people just think people that all these ministers that make pledge, they're scammers. Please don't join them. It may, be, it may not be for you, but there are people God may have been speaking to. So don't, don't join them to talk nonsense. It's not for you. You sit down. But let those that God has been speaking to come out and make their pledge to God. And then God takes them to the next level. So, in conclusion, our sacrifices and services to God are not in vain. I want you to tell your neighbor, your labor of love is not in vain. God is watching like he was watching those people with the widow that gave the two mites. He's watching. He's watching every day. You're coming to church faithfully. You're serving God faithfully. Like your pastor, despite all the things that have happened, he's still serving God faithfully. He's still there every time, coming for Bible study. He's not in vain. God is watching, and he's a faithful rewarder. He will definitely reward you, not just in heaven, but right here on earth. So, let us continue in obedience. In our offerings, in our tithes, in our first fruits. First fruits is also something we don't talk about here, but I believe in it. And I still did this this year. Your whole salary, at the beginning of the year, you just give it to God. Because it's God in the first place that helped you to go through school. And then you came out. Many people died. You came out, you graduated. You are now, I mean, like me, a doctor. And now a consultant is by his grace. So why won't you give him? First fruits is also important. We don't talk about it, but it's something that I've keyed into and I've seen work for me. Praise the Lord. So our offering, our tithes, our first fruits, our pledges, our seed offering, and all sorts of sacrifices in our time and our resources and talents. Let's remember that God is watching and he has been so good and gracious to us. And the least he demands is just to give our part. And honestly, if we did our part, we'll have less of people going into armed robbery in Nigeria. We have less of people going into drugs. I'm so bored in each time I, I come out to go to work in Lekki. Every day from, I, I try and leave my house early, but sometimes I leave maybe around eight or nine. I see young boys smoking early in the morning when they should be in school. I see young, young children, displaced, entirely displaced children. Nigeria has the worst number of out-of-school children. All those people from Kasina, Boko Haram has finished chasing them. They're in Lagos doing wiper. Two year old, three year old, and my heart is burning. And God is saying, Can I trust you to take care of these children? Can I trust you to build schools for them? Can I trust you to feed them? And I say, God, here am I, use me. And the same about you in your community, in your own niche and circle of influence. How can you make the society better? Because when you invite somebody to church and they are saved, they will not join them in armed robbery. They will not do yahoo yahoo. Jesus will save them and bring them to salvation, and they will become useful tools. They will become the next. E, the next Mark Zuckerberg, the next person doing coding all over Silicon Valley, the next person that will do mighty invention. So can we, the least you can do, just invite people to church, invite fellow youths, let them know their salvation. I'm also bothered when I see a lot of youths on Twitter and on social media, abusing, angry. I mean, they have every right to be angry. Look at the elections, let's not even go there. Look, let's not even go there. Because it was all a fraud. They promised us buybacks or whatever. Electronic transmission, and what did we see? One chance. And everybody has the right to be angry. But even, can we channel this anger to prayer and cry to God, Father, we want a new Nigeria. 
So my youths, my sisters and brothers, please, there is still hope in Christ. The Bible says Christ in me, Christ in you, the hope of glory. He's still there to give hope. And that hope you must transmit to your neighbors, to fellow youths in Nigeria. Let them know there is still hope. Nigeria is still great. People are still coming to explore mineral resources in Nigeria. We are trying to get out. But we have, the land is full. The land is rich. The land is green. And it's you and me that will make it happen. We all cannot travel out. And as you are here, God wants to make you discover something. God wants to bring wealth out of you. God wants to make your life better. But it needs you to cooperate with him. It needs you to be part of the kingdom investment. By yielding everything, your treasure, your talent, and your all to God. Shall we rise up to pray now? I want you to begin to ask for help. And to begin to rededicate yourself again to God. My Father, my life is in your hands. As a living sacrifice. Lord, prepare me as a living sanctuary. Oh, Lord, prepare me. Lord, prepare me. Lord, prepare me as a living sanctuary, holy and acceptable unto you. Help me, Lord. Prepare me for this kingdom prosperity that you have promised. Help me to make the sacrifice, sacrifice of my treasures, of my talent, of my time, of my resources. Help me to give you the best. Lord, prepare me, oh, Lord. Prepare my heart. Remove every heart of selfishness, every heart of pride, every heart of self aggrandizement every heart of accumulation of wealth, greed, covetousness. Lord, help me to know that nothing that I have that I have not received from you, and I must be willing to give it. Lord, prepare me. Choir, can you help me? I want us to take that song. Lord, prepare me. Sanctuary. Prepare me. A sanctuary. Oh, pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving, thanksgiving. I'll be be a I don't know if there's anybody there online or on site you want to give your heart to Jesus. That's the beginning of the journey. That's where your heart can be right to be a kingdom investment for God. If you are here, you don't know Jesus or online, I want you to begin to pray now and give your heart to the Lord. I don't know if there's anyone that does not know the Lord here. You are not born again. You don't know Jesus. Jesus is here to save you. That's the beginning of the journey. I want you to pray now. If you are there, just say after me and if you're online you also want to tell us so we can connect with you and be your friend Lord Jesus just say after me I accept you today into my heart as my Lord and Savior I receive the forgiveness of my sins and I accept your salvation thank you for saving me Lord in Jesus name I pray and I want us to now pray as we have prayed this prayer to pray for ourselves, that Lord, remove from me every heart of pride, every heart of selfishness. Give me a tender heart like that of a child, where you can entrust kingdom prosperity, where you can entrust kingdom wealth. Lord, build me, mold me, and shape me into that man and woman that you can entrust with kingdom wealth. Father, we thank you. Oh Lord, we appreciate you. Thank you for your word we have received today. Lord, we pray, oh God, that out of light arena we come, men and women, that you will entrust your kingdom wealth in the name of Jesus. Lord, prepare our hearts, oh God. Give us a heart of humility, a humble heart. Help us also to be loyal, to be obedient to you, to give our all to you, knowing that everything we have belongs to you. Thank you, Father, for helping us, Lord. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen.
Hallelujah. Can we appreciate our preacher one more time? Uh, so, you know, please sit down. Sit down. Thank you. You know, I quickly checked my phone when she was um, rounding off, and I remember the story of um, Timothy. Timothy, the mechanic from the eastern part of the country, who... Um, who somebody mistakenly transferred 10.8 million to his account and um, he returned that money to the man who owned the money and the man rewarded him with the sum of 50,000 so the question the first question is this in your heart wherever you are now how did you feel that it was 50,000 that was given back that was given to him out of 10.8 million. How is your heart? Does your heart consider that as justice? So, you see, if your heart does not consider that as justice, I'm, I'm sorry to say, that's where the issue starts. It was never your money in the first place. So when you return the money that was never yours, and you collected a gift of 50,000. Oh, t shirt. <laughs> but you will see, this is how the heart will reason. Out of a whole 10.8. Call it balance. <laughs> but you see, sincerely. That is what God still wants to deal with, with you and I. When our heart can be trusted for wealth to be, de to be deposited into our care. Do you know, yes, he will get that money. And if he did not return it, have you ever thought of all the other possibilities that can happen? Which includes JTAM. Because one of the things you are not thinking of is probably not sophisticated enough to run away and then you know this police. It's if they don't want to walk. Oh. If they want to walk, they will catch you. And then the shame, the ridicule, you will find out that 10.8 is not worth that shame and ridicule. I told you a story once here and I call your attention to the fact that a multi-billionaire called three young men with prominent, promising future and he assured them that he will give each of them $10 million. Now, it's no gain saying. They know he had the capacity. He's wealthy enough to give them that. And he says, but there's only one condition. They knew he was generous enough. They knew he had the resources and they know he can afford it and he will give them. But he said on one condition. And they said, what's the condition? I said, you have only one day to leave. So spend the, the, the money. And each of those guys rejected it. And he came to a conclusion, and he called them and he said to them, by doing this, you are admitting that you are worth more than that. You are admitting that as long as there is life, the possibility of making that and exceeding that is your reality. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, our heart is where God is looking at and is asking this question. Would you consume this upon your, upon your lust or will you use it to honor me? And it's a question we must answer. It's easy to say, Lord, prepare me. Very good. But really, at the heart in our heart of hearts, are we now there? Where resources can come our way and humanity can matter to us. Where we can gain understanding that this is not coming my way just for me alone. And when in that moment that you don't have and they can still make demand of you. Because in the heart, you justify those they should ask. Is Dr. Jade Sola not the consultant? Uh, 
But that is still the heart. And may our heart wins its approval. Because if you don't know, we were told that people gave out of their poverty. So it is not because you are poor, that is why you can't give. It is because we are greedy. And it is only us that we see in the picture. And until life moves beyond that, more cannot come. And so, Lord, I, I dare pray one more time that truly help us to examine our hearts. I'm praying that you help us make the necessary correction and adjustment. I'm praying that you will reveal us to ourselves. And Lord, send trusted men and women that can help us see our true reflection. And you are not in the business of condemnation. The essence is that we can make necessary correction. And so we humble ourselves before you. That in areas that we too have placed money above you. Let us know that truly the Lord is our portion. The maker of heaven and earth. The one to whom the cattle on thousand hills are subject to. We have you as God. And we take it this morning beyond mere rhetorics. We take it beyond mere talking. That in our hearts of hearts, we believe this to be true. And so, Lord, trust us with resources. Trust us with power. Trust us with influence. And when it comes truly, may we build a civilization and a culture that will honor you. May Jesus be glorified through us. Thank you, most high God. Thank you for opening of our, the heart of our mind. Thank you for helping us to see beyond the limitations. Thank you for, by the reason of what we've had today, we know there are possibilities. Thank you because you are taking us to that realm that we no longer even struggle to give. That we can give. We can give in dollars. We can truly give. Our hearts open up to these ideas as possibilities. That truly we can build schools for you. We can establish orphanages for you. We can build hospitals for you. Specialized hospitals we can build for you. We can be men and women that you can use. And it's not just because we have the money but because our heart is large enough to receive it. And there we thank you because the inflow will come to actualize this. For this we give you praise and thanksgiving. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Once again, doctor, thank you for coming our way.